Hello, welcome to part two of my common list programming language tutorials. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to um, go over how to declare functions. We're going to go over how to obviously write a list program by using functions and other forms. We're also going to be learning, if I have time, uh, the defund macro so you can define your own functions. And we're also going to be learning about the if special operator. So. Well, to get us started, we're going to go ahead and open up a source file. To do that, we can create a file of any type. Doesn't really matter. Just going to start with the text document. And this is assuming you have the show extensions box unchecked. I'll, I'll put a little description a description or a link on how to get the the extensions for files set up in the description. But pretty much Turn off that little checkbox because that is the great evil of the world. So for the extension here, I'm just going to give it dot lisp. For the name, I'm going to give it tutorial two. So open that file up in whatever text editor you like. I like to use Notepad plus plus because it gives me a nice little syntax highlighting with lisp, and it also matches parentheses and things without me having to you know install anything. So what we're going to go ahead and do is first examine the syntax of a proper Lisp program. A Lisp program consists of zero or more, that's right, zero, forms. A form is either an atom or it's a list. Now, atom is, is, is any of the sort that you've seen already, which is such as an integer, a floating point number, a character. Additionally, a couple of more atoms are, for example, the string, which is open quotation, then a series of characters, such as hello there. Another, another atom would be very, very similarly related is the vector, which is a, which is an, a single dimensional array, so, which contains any elements that you'd like. Uh, in in Lisp, Lisp is a dynamically typed language. This means that there is no forced declaration of types. You can you can declare variables and, and other things to be of specific types in order to optimize your program, but it is not strictly necessary to do so. And that's relevant for vectors because vectors can hold elements of any data type. So here we can have zero, one, and then the string i, and then we can have 10.3 and the character Z because I like Z and that is a valid vector a vector starts with a pound sign followed by a, an opening parentheses and then you have your your list of your list of elements in this case would be 0 space 1 etc the space is necessary just to separate elements, but you can have as many spaces as you'd like, such as in this monstrosity. And then when you're done typing elements, you go ahead and close out the, the, that list with the closing parentheses. And speaking of lists, the Lisp stands for list processing, in case you didn't know. So lists are actually very important in, in Lisp. Uh, a, a list program is actually just uh, a, a list of lists upon lists. Beca and that's because, as I said, a list program consists of either uh, uh, of multiple forms, which are either atoms or lists. So let's examine lists. Lists are created by having an open parentheses, then a series of values. Again, you can have an empty list which is also equal to nil. We'll go over that in a second. Let's use that instead. And we and otherwise we can have a list of one or more elements. So say this would for example would be the list that contains 0, 1 and 2. So the way a list is evaluated, atoms are evaluated essentially to themselves. Uh, that's kind of a misnomer, but we'll, we'll get to that eventually. The way lists are evaluated, however, is that their first argument is kind of special. Their first argument stands for the name of a function defined in the system currently. 
what it's going to do is it's going to invoke that function by evaluating each of the elements left to right. So here, or, or first to last, because we, we can go ahead and introduce, for example, new lines and things like that. This is still the same list. So it's going to evaluate the, the, the one, it's going to evaluate the two, and then it's going to get the function called zero and call it with these arguments. Now, um, there is no function called zero. You, you can go ahead and make one, though. Uh, because zero is a, is a singular digit, you'd have to use a little special syntax for that. But anyway, let's go on and let's set up a correct function call. So let's do print c and give it the string hello world. Now the print c function is going to take an, a lisp object. In this case, we're giving it the hello world string. And it's going to print it out to standard output in a way that, that's pretty to the user. So this is going to be our very first program. Let's open up command prompt, navigate to the correct directory. Mine is on the desktop, so I can go see uh, users Zulu desktop, or since I was already in the Zulu directory, I could just CD into the desktop, CD being change directory. Uh, in this course, you, hopefully you'll be a little more custom to command line. So anyway, we go ahead, now that we're in this directory, open up SBCL, and we're going to use the load function. The load function is going to take a, as its first argument the name or path of a file. For now, we're just going to be using the name as a string of a file. And it's going to open up that file, evaluate each of the forms in that file, top to bottom, and then it's going to tell us whether it was successful or not. So here we're going to give it the name of the file as a string, tutorial 2lisp and go. As we can see here, we have hello world because of the print C function, or yeah, the print C function call that we made here. And then we have T. Remember that we are still in the REPL, so this T is actually coming from, this, is, this T is actually the value of load. It's just telling us T for successful. In Lisp, we have true and false represented by T and nil. Though, as we'll see in a second, t is not the only truth value. Actually, anything that is not nil means true. So, in dealing with true and false, let's make a program that makes a decision. So here, we're going to learn about the if special operator. The reason the an if is a special operator and is not a function, it, it looks like a function call, but it, it's not is because if does not necessarily evaluate all its arguments. As I said before, a function will go ahead and evaluate each of its arguments left to right, every single one of them, and then it's going to uh, call, the, call the function that you name with those arguments. However, a special operator is allowed to not evaluate certain, certain pieces of the, the arguments. If will go ahead and take as its first argument a condition, a, an expression that evaluates to either true or false, and it's going to do something based on that. So here we're just going to keep it simple and just give it T for true. Uppercase or lowercase does not matter uh, for symbols. Same for the function here. We can type if in all uppercase to say that we're serious with this. Nobody does that though. Also, let's be nice to Lisp. So if t, we're going to do something. So here, let's say print c, hello, or yes, yes is better. And here we're going to have print c, no. And let's close the if form. So what's going to happen here is that if we'll evaluate the very first argument, in this case t, if that argument is not nil, that's to say anything that is not nil, here we have t. 
it's going to evaluate the first or rather the second argument which is the the consequent some people like to call it if it is nil if this instead was nil it's going to evaluate the second argument or the the third argument the the else so if we go ahead and type let's leave that as that go back to SBCO and let's load that file up again we can see that we have the output of yes and again the T from from load the yes was produced because the if saw this return the value T it saw that it's not nil so I went ahead and executed this if this had been nil as we'll see now it's going to instead evaluate this without evaluating this the, this this will o this very uh, the second argument is only evaluated with a truth value here so let's have it like this and see what that produces no which is correct as per my definition or my description and just to show that anything is true other than nil we can put here for example 5 this is a random number and uh, let's go ahead and load that and we see we have the output of yes produced also for you see guys out there if I put if 0 it's still true uh, this is because 0 is not the same as nil nil is a very special value now uh, oh also let me just keep that there to show that nil is also the same as an empty list you would never use it this way because empty list is, is not really the same as false uh, but you can put this there and what that produces is no because as I said before nil and empty list mean the same thing so let's get rid of that so I think I'm gonna cut this video right there because I might run out of time soon so I'll see you guys later